the Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaravalli from CK Research, and I'm here on set in New York at Cisco's Pen One building, and I'm joined by Kusana Masuku from a company called Science Yet in Zimbabwe, and you are the Cisco Youth Leadership Award winner for 2023, which is part of Cisco's Global Citizen Activities. In fact, you're in town for the event as well. We both attended the climate uh, the climate summit meetings this morning, uh, and just. Uh, Give me a quick bio on yourself, what you do, and what, what the mission of your company is. Thank you very much. Um, so at Science, basically what we're doing is uh, we're building Africa's STEM and uh, robotics learning infrastructure because we realize that um, there is no infrastructure for STEM learning. And um, students have been learning STEM, for example, in Zimbabwe, theoretically. And it becomes hard for them to actually articulate with the real life problem solving scenarios. Um, hence why we started uh, Science to fill that gap and provide students with the true hands-on experience for STEM and robotics. So they would have to actually try and learn robotics off of paper. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, stem off of paper. Yeah. Basically, everything is theoretical. So even um, you realize most of the experiments, they just theorized and they don't get to have that actual building perspective, you know, and um, it becomes a problem because um, right now, like um, universities, even in Zimbabwe, are producing a lot of engineers, but we've got a lot of problems which are not being solved because, um, you know, students have been trained to be just uh, theoretically get good grades and pass and move on to the system. Yeah. And, uh, and give me a sense of your, your background. You're, an actual, you're actually a teacher, right? So yes. how did you come up with this idea? Um, so I actually started off as a teacher, um, teaching sciences, uh, which is physics and chemistry. That's what I was trained professionally to do. Um, and I got, uh, when I finished my college, I got thrown like into the deep rural areas um, to teach those sciences. So it was kind of like a very big challenge because here you are, you're trying to explain these different engineering concepts, um, these different, um, you know, physics-based uh, um, problems and uh, solutions to students, but they can't even picture it. They can't mm. even understand what you're talking about. So for me, um, I was like, how do we get these students to try and understand what I'm talking about? So when science started, we actually started, uh, through virtual reality. So using my pay, I, I actually bought a couple of uh, VR headsets um, so that um, I could uh, virtually take the students through some factories, through some processes so that they understand like what um, science and STEM is all about. So that's when I realized that there's really a big problem in our education system and um, we need to start introducing these things um, from an early onset and making sure that students gain practical exposure because um, that then allows them to remember and even um, pass the subjects. And, um, and uh, another problem was that the students were actually dropping out of science subjects because now um, they can't link it um, to the real world. So it becomes a subject that's like um, abstract and hard to them. But um, once you introduce some practical aspects of it, then it becomes so much fun and interesting for them to study. Yeah, I know. Actually, in college, I was a physics math major. Oh, and wow. I know you can you can learn things theoretically, but when you actually do an experiment where you get to have exactly. pucks bounce off each other and see the angle, yeah, or, yeah. you know, it, it is a lot different. You can envision it in your head, and I, I can appreciate the difficulty yeah, that you yeah. had. Now, within the realm of education, there's a lot of things you could focus on. Why STEM? Why, why, why'd you start there? Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, you know, like... Um, in the world right now, we're being driven by STEM activities. Um, if you look at um, the AIs, the chat GPTs, the engineering, the robotics, everything falls under STEM. And um, for us to really break barriers and to be able to push innovation, like in third world countries, we need to have a deeper focus on STEM. And not just STEM, but practical STEM education, where we're introducing um, STEM concepts um, from a very uh, early age, like from four years old, um, students need to start being able to know how to build, how to be creative, how to actually apply some different um, uh, uh, STEM resources into their everyday living. So... And you start that young at four years old? Yes, that's wow. what we do at the yeah. Maker Labs. Because uh, <laughs> the thing is, we realized that once we started our programs, we realized that students are very creative. Like, um, 
they they have all these kinds of imaginations and um if you give them the proper tools you you'll be amazed like at yeah. some of the things they'll build for you um so we decided to really nature that um creativity and um focus on driving um that exploration and yeah, give me some examples of what their interest areas are the thing i love about kids that age is they aren't encumbered with a lot of the things that adults are, where we have all these barriers that are false, frankly, where we think this can't be done. Exactly. Kids just always think this can be done. Yeah. And uh, I watched one of the, the videos where you're talking to some of the students and you had a little girl who was setting out to build the next iPhone. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> yes. and, and, but you got to shoot high. So yeah. um, give me some examples. What are some of the more interesting, some of the areas of focus and some of the ideas that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, like um, we've helped uh, students build um, like many different kind of projects with um, this rural girl who actually came to the Maker Lab. Um, they designed a water lab for sensor moisture um, where like um, if the soil is very dry, like um, it detects and it automatically waters um, the system itself. And you how know, old, how old is um, she's um, 16. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to start um, uh, having those kinds of yeah. uh, students, you know, design all these um, recent, uh, like recent projects, which can actually grow like innovation. And just to talk another uh, different project, um, like I just got, um, when I was just reading my messages earlier on today, um, one of the students whom we had um, last week um, came in all the way from Masungo, which is a different province in Zimbabwe. So they were building like um, a blind walking stick, uh, which is a smart one. So it detects like it has um, an obstacle detection sensor. Huh. And when you get close to something, it beeps. Then if you also like um, takes yeah, into yeah. water, it uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, makes a different beef. So that student actually won the national um, yeah, competition in their province for STEM um, use, uh, through that blind walking stick. And we were talking to um, another like um, Catholic sister who runs this um, other innovation uh, fund and they want to like um, sponsor up to 100 of those actually made to production um, for for a, a school of the blind people. So you see now that um, projects um, actually start being applied into like real world scenarios mm -hmm. all from just a, an idea from a student. Yeah, I guess that has uh, some interesting long term economic implications yes. for those countries as well, right? Because yes. you get more jobs created and things like that. Exactly. Now, since you are trying to do this in, in regions that are still developing, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges you face? Because it's one thing to be able to do hands-on labs in developed nations, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to try and do it in a, in a rural area or an undeveloped nation where they don't have ac you don't have access to the same technology. Yeah. So talk about those challenges. So we've actually met a lot of um, challenges. Um, we started um, science like um, the world learning of robotics and STEM using what you call maker labs. So this is where we built our maker lab in Blauai, Zimbabwe, um, where students could come in um, to learn um, uh, those um, like courses. But then um, we had a, a big challenge because now the students um, from other country, uh, from other provinces, and parents now were like advocating also like uh, when are you coming to this province? When are you coming to this province? So now there's a lot of interest. Then at the same time. You, the resources to scale it up um, are quite difficult. So um, this is when like, um, we kind of devised the robotics kit um, to enable students to be able to like, um, just get a kit and be able to do it the whole practical course at all. Because we didn't want it to be just an online learning experience because we're not an e-learning company. We're actually like um, an infrastructural company. So um, this is, this is like some of the challenges which we face, you know, to say, okay, now there's an uptake of this. How do we accelerate and scale it up? Then also there's the challenge of, um, you know, bringing this kind of education to students like in rural areas. Because I remember the first time we introduced virtual reality to students in rural areas, they were so shocked and amazed. Uh, like at VR, they even somewhere like, this is witchcraft. Uh, this is <laughs> exactly. So like, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cultural barrier and um, you need to kind of like introduce it in ways um, that is, um, very innovative so that the students are able to really uptake and um, um, use the technologies to further their studies. Yeah, and I know you're going to do a show and tell, but I just have a, a couple of questions. So uh, obviously, you know, you're, you're dealing with a lot of technical things. And so have you looked at how technology could help you actually uh, help you complete your mission um, 
a little faster. I, I know yeah. you and I talked earlier about some of the Cisco technology. So tell me how you're trying to you think about how to incorporate some of the digital technologies into what you're doing. Exactly. So um, Cisco is um, a, like a, a large base in uh, technology and infrastructure. So what we're trying to do is um, make our maker labs um, smarter. Because if we have smart maker labs across the different, because um, right now we actually launched um, another maker lab recently in Botswana, and uh, we have one in Blaue, and we're opening another one in South Africa. So mm -hmm. like, uh, like, like um, we've seen a lot of smart technology from Cisco here in Pen One, where you can have the smart systems where you can monitor basically like um, if there is a lesson running in a classroom from the reception side, if there is a uh, you know. Um, uh, is a room free for uh, for some event or also collaborating with other maker labs you know having that infrastructure makes it so um uh, smarter for us to be able to accelerate our mission faster because then our workflows become so efficient so technology is like um, a really big driver in that and one of the biggest things um i was actually talking with the cisco team was like um you realize um for instance, our robotics kit, it's uh, IoT based. Um, the part one is IoT based. And all of these systems here, when we talk to the engineer, like they've got all these various sensors and yeah. everything. So at the same time, we start giving students an end to end learning experience where they're seeing this from a kit, then they're seeing it around, showing them how it actually applies to make this um, like this lab smarter in real life uh, scenarios. So that's quite uh, one of the benefits um, for having um, that kind of technology included in our infrastructure. Yeah, the, uh, uh, in fact, I know I've toured this building a few times, and I think one of the metrics they gave was there's more IoT devices connected in this building than there are IT devices. Exactly. So that's, that's a, it is moving that way. So yeah. anyways, you have this kit here. What are you, what are you showing us here? Yeah, so this is um, our, our introductory robotics kit. Um, so this was actually designed out of the problem that when we started enrolling students for our practical STEM uh, sessions in um, in our maker labs, there was now a crazy demand because parents from different uh, provinces like were now asking, um, how do we get this to our students? How do we, like when are you coming to this city? When are you coming to this city? So we set out to design a kit which was basically number one, very affordable to the modern day student. And so what would this cost? Um, so this is just $50. Okay. So it comes um, with all the learning sessions, a plug and play, you plug it to a laptop or a computer, you get all the online learning sessions, and you also um, get to experience the hands-on part of the robotic site. So it's part one, which is focused on coding, IoT, and electronics. So like, um, if we take a deeper look um, inside, um, it has a there's all these different um, sensors, LEDs, cables, um, and our special microcontroller. So this is what powers basically the, it's the brain of the set. Um, it allows the students to build many different projects like um, traffic lights, um, weather sensing projects, um, all these projects you can think of basically. So it, it's what powers it, it's like the mini computer. So we designed this ourselves. Um, because the the Is actual like a Raspberry Pi, basically? yeah, yeah, but it's an Arduino. Okay. So um, this one is called the Deep Arduino uh, because it's uh, it's different from the modern day Arduino because like the Arduino is um, very expensive. So we designed this one to be actually low cost because if you look at the um, the actual Arduino. Um, it uses what is called SMT components, uh, which are like um, soldered on by machine. So those machines are very expensive, and yeah. um, the actual Arduino itself is around thirty US dollars, like the 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 original Arduino. So we created like um, an Arduino which uses THT components, which are through hole components. Like if you see, everything is just soldered inside mm -hmm. here. So like um, anyone can sort it by hand and it also allows even some of the students who are interning at our maker labs to actually learn how to build or who are actually doing our courses to learn how to build these Arduinos. So it reduces the price by 100%, making it uh, the kit so affordable because like a basic starter kit robotics kit would be around $200 um, without, actual, without actually even having the video courses to for the students to learn so when they enroll like um 
with the kit, um, they actually also get to have a certificate. They get to have uh, like um, 24 seven support system. If they're facing any challenges, they get to talk to someone on our WhatsApp line and uh, diagnose any problem they might be health, uh, having. So, so, we're there's, so there's online classes that accompany it. Yes, okay. exactly, exactly. So it makes it, um, uh, it provides a, a really nice learning care for the students to be able to follow on and then also let them nature out their own creativity by building their projects. So like, for instance, as we don't have exams, like when you complete the course, you just build out a certain project um, using the kit. You can even get assistance from um, our teachers. And then that's how we see that you've truly mastered it. Oh, that's very interesting. That's, uh, that's a, and so uh, how many different types of kits are there? Um, so like um, there'll be three kits. Um, this one is the part one, which is the beginner. Then we will have the part two and the part three, with uh, part two being the intermediate and part three being the advanced. So it then completes your full starter learning experience into the war robotics um, um, course. Well, it must be, uh, they must be very popular. So, <laughs> um, uh, and so, uh, you know, thanks for the overview. Uh, let's have a little fun now. We are yep, here from Global yep. Citizen. Um, <laughs> sure. uh, do you have a favorite, you are speaking on stage though, right? Yeah, in front of 60,000 people. In nervous <laughs> Uh, not really. Like I think um, more than sixty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I think um, I'm now just in a phase where you, you when you get to the stage, you just yeah. uh, experience it all there. <laughs> and do you have a, do you have a favorite band that's that's playing more? Um, I'm actually looking forward um, to the Stray Kids um, division, the Three Racha, which will be playing because um, I've been seeing they're very popular, so mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing the, that experience. Yeah, they have a. They do a good job of having the diversity of uh, of, of different artists too. So yeah. it's a fun time. And this is your first time at a Global Citizen. Um, yeah, for the festival, yes. For yeah, the festival, you know, yes. They'll have a lot of fun at it. So, <laughs> uh, now, I, one last question um, for entrepreneurs out there. Are you know obviously trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems, like you know improving education in undeveloped countries. Some people think. You know, it, it takes a village, but really it starts with one person with one idea, right? So yeah. if somebody's watching this and maybe they have that great idea and maybe they're a little intimidated to get started, what's some advice you can give them on how to get going? Um, the, always, I, uh, the advice I always give to any entrepreneur is to, you know, um, don't think about it too much because um, if you get to start thinking with the uh, ideas and um, the logistics of it it becomes so complicated just get started just get started is the best advice i give to anyone because like um if you look at how science is started at that time it was just a leap of faith uh, i remember resigning my actual teaching job to say enough for, i didn't even have any plan of how I'll be sustainable myself yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> i just went with it and um of course it might not always like work out but you would have always tried to do something that um is actually a life changer to so many people so the best advice is to always just start and um go through and you know there are always people role models who are out there who've already done the job and what you can only do is to just um, now talk to those people you get guidance so that um, they make your path much easier because they've experienced some of the challenges which you'll probably face along the way well i'm looking forward to seeing uh some entrepreneurs maybe five, ten years from now saying they got their start with science. So yeah. That, 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 that would be so interesting. So if people want to know more about science, what's your website? Um www.science.africa. Okay, that's yeah. easy to know. And I'll include the link below. Yeah. Um, and uh anyways, uh Kusana, again, congratulations on winning the Cisco Youth Leadership Award. It's a very prestigious prize. I've interviewed um uh, many of the other uh, recipients, and I can say there's one thing you have in common with all of them. You're all very impressive young people, and thanks a lot for you know doing what you do because the the world sorely needs it. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, as on behalf of Kasana, I'm Zias Caravala from, uh, from CK Research, saying thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another video.